Two years ago, I turned a $5 packet of seeds into more tomatoes than I could count, and it fed our family for an entire year. So today, I wanna share with you all the tips and tricks that made it super easy for me to do that. going to take a look at all of these different cool varieties of tomatoes all of which I've tried over the last couple of years we're then going to look at tips for starting from seed and transplanting including three hacks for endless tomato supply we are then going to look at the best trellis system in my opinion for maximizing your tomato production. And lastly, some of the advantages of growing one of my personal favorites, the humble cherry tomato. If that all sounds good to you, let's jump in. So although there are lots of different varieties of tomato, there are actually two different types that you need to know about. And just to understand a little bit about those two types, you can buy indeterminate tomatoes or determinant varieties of tomatoes. So first of all, we'll look at determinant varieties, and these tend to be the more compact, bushy uh, plants that don't put out long shoots. In fact, what happens at the end of their shoot is that they will form flowers. And basically, um, that means that once they have produced their fruit, they're going to stop producing fruit. And so they have got a predetermined amount of fruit, and that's all they're going to produce for that season. It's great for container growing, um, but if you are looking to maximize your harvest, you might, if you're growing a determinate variety, you might want to plant lots of seeds. And then you have your indeterminate varieties, which basically keep producing all season long. Um, as long as you keep harvesting, they have long shoots with flowering um, leaves all the way along. And I think that this is the best variety to grow. If you're heading towards self-sufficiency and you're wanting to put away as many tomatoes as you can to feed the family for the year. But I always like to try different ones and I like to grow a different variety. I think it's fun to try out the different flavors and see how well different seeds thrive. So in the last few years, some of the different ones we've tried are the Chadwick Cherry Tomato, which put on a big set of perfectly round tomatoes. Um, the jujube tomato has an amazing taste and they're sort of more of a grape shaped. Uh, slightly larger um, orange banana tomatoes and slightly larger again um, homestead tomatoes. And then on the determinate side um, in the first year, I also grew the mini bell tomato. There it is which are great for balconies or uh, small pots. And it, it's a dwarf plant that puts on little fruit. Um, and it's quite a cute and fun tomato plant to try or to even grow them and give them as a gift to neighbors or friends. This year, I'm gonna be trying the famous Roma tomato. Um, this one is a determinate variety, so I've started quite a lot of seeds. I'm also adding the beefsteak tomato and a fun one, which is this black strawberry tomato, uh, which gives a colorful uh, variety of fruit, apparently with a bit of a strawberry taste. So um, one thing that they do have in common is that they're all heirloom varieties, which means that the seeds will reproduce after the parents plant, after the parent plants. So if you harvest your fruit and save some of those seeds, then you can replant the second generation without having to buy more. So the way that we choose our tomatoes are based on how we use them. And I think it's a good way if you're just starting out is think of the different ways that you want to use tomatoes. Are you going to want mainly slicing tomatoes for salads? Are you going to want to preserve them and make canned tomatoes? Are you going to want tomato paste? Um, because different varieties will lend themselves to different uses. Um, I do love to have a slicing tomato during the summer season. So we're doing the beefsteak this year. And then last year we did the homestead tomato, which were really good for that. 
Um, I love to have um, a variety of cherry tomatoes just to throw in a salad. So we're trying the new black strawberry tomato this year. Um, in previous years, we have had the um, jujube cherry tomato, the mini bell, and then the Chadwick cherry tomato. Um, we also used these uh, orange banana tomatoes, which had a nice flavor. My son really liked those. But my main reason for growing tomatoes is to put up enough sauce for the winter. And so this year I'm trying the Roma tomatoes, but I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about storing and preserving tomatoes at the end of the video. So with tomatoes, when you're starting from seed, you want to start around eight to 10 weeks before the last frost date. Some people will start much earlier than that. However, I don't like my plants getting too big before I'm transplanting as it's really just a lot more work because that you'll have to go through a, a number of stages of potting them up as they grow before you eventually get them in the ground outside. Tomatoes do like warm soil to germinate. So you can use a heat mat to get them going, um, but heat mats are actually limited in what they can do. And when you're starting tomatoes in four inch pots, like I do, um, heat mats probably won't heat the soil all the way through. Um, so heat mats are usually more suited to when you're planting in flat seed trays, which have sort of an inch depth, um, or the, the seed plug trays, which you can get. Um, but I usually start so many um, that I, and I only have one heat mat. Um, I just leave them on my growing rack and I let them find their own way. So I'm starting beefsteak tomatoes um, in pots and I've got about 25 seeds um, and I've got 16 pots here, but I'm going to do um, two different varieties. So in these eight pots, I'm going to do two seeds per pot. So ideally, I'd like to get two to three seedlings germinating in each pot. So I've gone ahead and sown about five to six seeds per pot. Um, and then if I do get a success rate of 50% or more, then what I will do is I will then separate out those um, tomato plants. You'll find that in temperatures between 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, um, tomatoes are going to sprout up pretty fast in, in probably just over a week. Um, and between 50 to 60 degrees, they'll probably take about two to three weeks. Having said that, my number one tip for germinating seeds is to use a propagator lid. And by that, I simply mean any clear plastic lid that will form a dome over the seed tray. Um, and what that does is it sets up this little micro environment, um, creating a high humidity inside the dome, uh, which actually has a warmer temperature. So it keeps the seeds moist and slightly warmer for germination to occur. But once they sprout, I will move them under grow lights and then I will remove the lid uh, once they have their first leaves opened up and they can start photosynthesizing. These trays are actually um, from the store and they have uh, croissants in them or I think cookies sometimes. So um, they're great to keep, do not throw them out. So when it comes to transplanting, the best time to pot up your seedlings is when the first set of true leaves have grown in. You can see on this plant, these are the true leaves at the top, as opposed to these first leaves that the plant gets, which are not actually true leaves and they will eventually drop off. So these leaves that the plant first gets are called dicotyledon leaves and they're actually the leaves that are contained within the embryo of the seed. So when the plant gets its first true leaves, at this point the plant is no longer feeding from the seed pod, um, but it's actually photosynthesizing in its own right and that's where it re really needs its own space for growth and root, root development. However, this year <laughs> I'm guilty of letting things go a bit longer than I should um, and so I thought it would be a good moment to show you 
how to remedy a situation where multiple seedlings have actually grown up together. So what to do when you have this situation? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have sown six seeds in this pot and they have all germinated. And rather than thinning them, all, thinning them out, which is one option, I don't like to waste seed. And so what I have done is I've probably let them go just a little bit too long and let them grow up together. And now because the roots are starting to come out the bottom, it means that they're probably getting a bit tangled. So I'm going to show you the best way to separate out tomato seedlings um, because I can get six tomato plants out of this rather than just killing off the smaller ones. Once they get into their own pots, they will uh, become established as plants in their own right. When transplanting anything, the best way I know to minimize the shock is to ensure the soil is moist. So that means watering the transplants at least an hour before you start. You don't want the soil so wet that it's falling apart, but when the soil is hydrated, it does break into clumps more easily. You also want to transplant the seedlings into moistened soil. So water the new soil pots before you put the seedling in. Then it's simply a case of teasing the roots apart, working around the root ball to see which one feels like it might come out first. And when you find one, if you gently work the root ball with your fingers to loosen the roots up, and then when you're ready, gently lift the seedling away from the rest by sliding it straight upwards as if you were pulling it up from the ground. This way, the roots are more likely to slide out with it rather than if you pull it up from the side you are more likely to snap intertwined roots. So when the time comes where the weather is warm enough to get your tomatoes outdoors, you first of all want to spend some time hardening off your young plants. I started these tomatoes on the 5th of March, so they are now coming up to about 12 weeks old. And over the last two weeks, I've been potting them up. So that was one that I separated out just into a slightly larger pot. And I've also been getting them outdoors for periods of the day so that they can get accustomed to the climate, um, the wind and the rain and all of the um, elements that they haven't been exposed to indoors. And they've actually perked up and, you know, they're looking really um, healthy now that they're in their own pots. So I have three hacks to share with you for endless tomato supply. And this is what you must do to get your tomatoes off to a really good start. So when you're ready to transplant your um, tomato seedlings, I'll show you on this one because the other ones have lost it. You're going to remove the lower branches. You're going to cut off the lower branches with um, a sterile sharp implement, and that will leave only the top few branches and the growth tip. And that's because if you can see all of these hairs on the stem of the tomato, they have the ability to form auxiliary roots, which is something that's really cool about tomatoes. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bury the stem to make all of those roots form and develop a much stronger root system. So the next step is that you're going to dig a trench and you're going to dig a trench large enough to lay your tomato seedling down sideways. Um, and this is because um, what we want to do, so th basically the, the leaves will still be sticking out the surface, but by laying the plant sideways, you're going to help them develop better vertical roots. And this is especially helpful if you have leggy seedlings like I have, they've been competing for space and um, they've stretched really tall and thin. So what I'm gonna to do to remedy that is I'm going to plant it in a horizontal trench. And a horizontal trench is much better than digging a deeper vertical hole. And that's because tomatoes are heat loving plants. Obviously the deeper that you bury the root ball and stem, the cooler the soil will be. Um, which will slow its growth. So a horizontal trench is going to keep the plant in the warm layer of the soil um, to really sort of encourage it to start growing. The third part of my strategy is that you are going to plant an egg with your tomato. Um, I made a post about this on Instagram and some others 
told me when they replied that they um, use fish heads. Um, some people just use the eggshells around the surface. Um, and the idea of doing this, I believe, comes from the story of the pilgrims who were shown how to plant their crops for success by the Native Americans who had been farming the land for years before they arrived. Um, and the reason that, um, that people do it is, I believe, to give a direct supply of nutrition to the plant roots as they get started. Now, since tomatoes in particular are calcium loving plants and calcium actually protects them from a disease called blossom end rot, the eggshell is particularly good for them in that it is it supplies a direct source of calcium. So I actually crack the egg and I pop it into the trench before I plant the tomato. My one warning about this, however, is that if you live in a country location, especially in a wooded area like we do, it is likely that you will have hungry wildlife digging up your beautiful work, <laughs> unless you have a family dog or an electric fence or some other, other way of protecting your plants. And I have personal experience of this last year when a raccoon dug up a whole 60 foot row of tomatoes that I had planted. And then I replanted them and he came back and this happened five nights in a row and I lost quite a lot of my tomatoes. So this year I'm using some electric fencing and um, just poultry netting, poultry netting to protect the young plants while they get themselves established. But planting with an egg is definitely going to give you a prolific growing tomato plant. So another transplanting trick about um, making sure tomato plants survive um, is about preventing cutworms in your garden. So cutworms are um, moth larvae and they're usually hidden in the soil. They come out at night to feed on the plants um, and, and, and they can cause significant damage to the stem of a seedling. They actually can cut right through um, the stem and I think that's where they get their name from being cutworms. But thankfully, there is a simple remedy for this. So when you transplant your young seedlings, what you're going to do is you're going to gently insert um, a stick. It doesn't actually have to be as thick as a pencil, even a toothpick would work, but something that's quite thin and straight um, right next to the stem of your seedling. And what will happen is that the larvae will feel around the stem of your plant and they'll detect the stick and be fooled into thinking that it's the plant's stem and they will know that it's too um, tough to chew through um, and so it will move on in, in search of its next victim. So um, that's a really good tip to protect your seedlings against cutworms. So those are my three transplanting hacks and I know it can be overwhelming to remember so I've actually developed an acronym and that is Endless tomato strategy. That's egg, trench, stick. And I've said it a couple of times, endless tomato strategy, egg, trench, stick. And hopefully you can remember that when you're out planting your tomatoes. So let's talk about trellising. Once your plants are in the ground and they're starting to grow, they will soon get to a place where they need support. There are loads of different trellising systems out there and differently designed tomato cages. So I'm just showing you what has worked for me. But I was researching this three years ago and I ended up putting up a trellis system that I had seen uh, Josh Satin put together over at Satin Hill Farm. Um, I have made a separate DIY video on how I put it together, um, which I'll link below and I'll also put it in the cards up here. And um, what I found that this trellis system is super strong and sturdy, it will support a lot of plants. Um, and what I do is I tie a line um, just with some garden twine from the top of the trellis. Um, and when the plants are starting to need support, I tie a loose loop around the base of the central stem. Um, and as the plant grows, I simply weave it around the leading stem. And occasionally the plant will put out branches that get super heavy with fruit. And in that case, um, what I'll do is I'll drop an extra line from uh, the top of the trellis um, to support that particular branch. And you might need to do that, so keep an eye if you're growing larger tomato varieties. This year we're growing the beef steak, which are typically known for needing extra support on their branches. But in year one, I planted a hundred cherry tomato plants 
um, in three in-ground rows um, from one packet of seeds that cost me $5. And using that trellising system, it was the most incredible victory harvest. We had tomatoes in our freezer. We actually filled the freezer and it kept our family in tomatoes for the entire year. If you are worried about um, heavier tomato varieties, um, there is another trellising system uh, called the Florida Weave and it's also using um, twine or string. Um, and you basically, it's a horizontal method of trellising tomatoes by weaving the uh, string in and out the different plants back and forth as the plant grows. Um, and you basically tie it off on the supporting posts on either side. But I found that vertical trellising has worked just fine. So again, it's something that you can experiment with different varieties and see what works for you. Now, if your goal is growing tomatoes for self-sufficiency and you're just getting started with tomatoes, I have got some advice that will get you off to a flying start. And especially when it comes to putting up tomatoes for the winter, it can actually get a little overwhelming because you're certainly gonna find that you have more tomatoes than you know what to do with. And that is where the underrated cherry tomato comes into its own. There are so many advantages of growing cherry tomatoes. And in my opinion, this is what makes it a game changer. So this is my favorite variety of cherry tomato um, for the flavor um, and the way that they grow. Um, and some of the advantages to growing cherry tomatoes is that firstly, you don't need to prune the vines um, and take the suckers off. Um, it doesn't make one jot of difference to the fruit production. I actually had a heavier fruit production on the control vine. I was running an experiment um, and one vine that I didn't prune at all, it had more fruit. Um, I find that cherry tomatoes are more flavorful. Um, everybody loves the fruit burst sweetness um, from cherry tomatoes in a salad. Um, and it also it translates into cooked uh, cherry tomatoes too. And this variety I have found to be extremely flavorful. That's jujube tomato. Um, the third advantage of cherry tomatoes is that come time to harvest, I find that they have good shelf life as fresh tomatoes. So if you're keeping them on the counter in your kitchen, um, no problem for a couple of weeks. I don't find that they go soft or split. And even on the vines, I find that they don't um, split. Maybe it's to do with more even water dis distribution in the plant. Um, but in the last three years, I haven't seen any split tomatoes on the vine. Um, just like heavier tomatoes can sort of really um, swell after a heavy rainfall and they, and they burst open. So um, cherry tomatoes are good in that way. Now, when it comes to saving cherry tomatoes, you can actually freeze them whole. There's no preparation needed. Um, if you're gonna wash them, then you need to dry them so they don't stick together when they freeze. But you basically just freeze them on trays. And then once they're frozen, you just pour them into a gallon Ziploc bag and they store really easily. When it comes time to cook them, you can cook them whole. There's no need to blanch. You don't need to remove the skins or spend hours taking the cores out. Um, you can cook them and blitz them. Uh, the skins are so thin that it blends really easily into a great sauce with a great flavor. And then lastly, they are also great roasted. You can just slice them up and roast them um, in a tray with some olive oil and they make, a, they make a great addition to a tray of baked vegetables. So I find that cherry tomatoes really do take much work out of preserving. Um, and as I said, if you're interested in the variety of cherry tomatoes that I like to grow, it's this jujube tomato um, and it's sort of a grape shape. I've tried a variety of different cherry tomatoes, but these ones are my absolute favorite. So I hope today's video has been useful. You picked up some tips. Um, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate you being here. Leave me any comments or questions in the description box below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. You can also find me on Instagram at the little palette farmhouse too. And I will see you in the next one.